Darren Cartel, welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to episode, do you know? I don't know. It's like 48, 49, season two. This isn't your first time on the podcast? No, I think it's the third time. And then we've done some fair points together. We've done a couple of fair points, but I think it's the first time we've spoke since. Well, actually, we've spoken every day. <laughs> but the first time we've spoken since uh, we were on tour. In Australia, February. Maybe in, where were we? We were in Noosa. Noosa. That was the best location. That was great. Um, but there's so many things that's happened between them. Vaccinations, COVID, lockdown, end of lockdown, Sydney lockdown. You coming back. Me coming back. And because we see each other every day, we forget to have these kind of catch-ups. Yeah. And it's always nice to, I think it always benefits other people hearing these conversations as well, just to get an insight of kind of what's happening and I guess everyone will learn something, right? Now, one of the first things I've been itching to talk about this yeah. since last night is uh, one of my social media posts, which is causing an upset on the internet. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to lie for everyone that's listening. Um, I'm that guy that likes all my friends' posts and sometimes I'm looking into it. <laughs> and I looked into it yesterday and I commented on it and I was like, why is everyone so angry? And obviously you triggered a few bodybuilders. Well, not you more than a few. But um, I agree with the message that you're saying. And any most people I've spoken to that have come out of bodybuilding have left with some difficulties with mental health as well as there there are a lot of things right but it's do you know what and even to just for people that haven't seen the post like bodybuilding is actually anyone that wants to build muscle like so when a chick says i want to develop my glutes she wants to bodybuild that's not the culture we're going after or i'm going after the culture i'm going after is they if people want to train and lift weights and eat protein and get bulky and get you know large i'm all about it but there's a community of people who uh, epitomize physique like competing as the best thing you can do in fitness. And that's where I'm like, nah, you've got that wrong. That fitness should be about seeing what the body can accomplish. Yeah. And 12 weeks of dieting to step up on stage is not my idea of a sport. No, nah, um, I don't think it's a sport. I know people are going to get angry at that. I don't think it's a sport. But I think, <clears throat> because what it does is when you create if all your goals are based around your physique, it can create a lot of problems for you in the future because you, you don't acknowledge everything else and all you're thinking is about moving forward, which is fine. But a lot of these people don't actually stop and realize they don't look back at what they've achieved, right? And the truth is, and maybe this is with us as well, with why we started training and stuff is you needed something to attach yourself to. You needed something to give you an edge. I'm not going to lie, bruv. I do jiu-jitsu. I think it gives me an edge. I think it's fucking cool, right? But I don't think jiu-jitsu creates big problems for me in the future with possibly my mental health, physical health, or the people around me. But and the, and the reason for that is we can see a strong correlation during cartel this year, next year, next year, next year. It's all uphill. It's growth, yes. And by the time you're 50, 60, although you may not be physically able, you can then sit back and mentor people beneath you. Like, yeah. Uh, Mauricio Gomez, for yeah. instance, 61 years old, yeah. by the mats, is he throwing people about? No, but he gives so much to the sport with, if you, like you say, connect your complete worth to how you look on stage, that's not only, you know, something very difficult for women. It's about getting very, very lean Yeah, from a physiological standpoint, that's difficult for them. But the, the men, the, the majority of people that are disagreeing with me yeah. are men on anabolic steroids. Yeah. Yeah, because there's, you've touched enough. I, and that's it. Because if someone was to come in this room and go, hey, lads, jiu-jitsu is really shit. I'd be like, sweet, bro. Um, cool. You're missing out. Yeah, you should try it. I don't care what yeah. you think. Do you and, know what I mean? You know, it's obvious to me you've probably never done it. And I have never competed. Yeah. So, you know, some it shouldn't be hard for people to sit back and go, oh, no, nah, you've got it wrong. But they're not. And they're reacting because, like you say, I think we've touched enough. I, listen, I respect bodybuilders with the amount of hard work that they put in, right? but I respect old school bodybuilders way more. The guys that go into the gym, put their hoodies on, hide their body while they're training ridiculously hard and not doing it for people on social media. Today's bodybuilding culture, what I've seen from going to fitness events, going to bodybuilding competitions with a friend, checking out what it's like. And all I've seen is people doing it for, it looks like, it doesn't look like it's for them. 
I'm not saying everyone, obviously there's individuals there that go there, do it for themselves or whatever. But I feel like it's just channeling and um, attaching an energy, a kind of problem you're dealing with to something. And again, that could be like what we do with jiu-jitsu. I don't know. But and it, and if, it, if, if it's someone's way of dealing with trauma or whatever it is, yeah. that's, that's fine. But also in that post, I said, I admire the top one to 2%. Yeah. Hattie Boydell, Lauren Simpson, yeah, yeah. Holly Baxter, Lane Norton. Yeah, I yeah. could go on. Yeah. But these people not only dominate their space, they run careers adjacent to that that benefit people. Yeah. There is a massive population of people, I believe, that are doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And they're, it's similar to, if we were to remove it out of context, if you're a model where all you have in life is that you're good looking, and you get paid to smile and laugh when you rub in shampoo. You know you're a ticking time bomb. Yeah. And if you don't attach yourself to something with more purpose, yeah. whether it's family, profession, whatever, you're going to run out of relevance and you're going to fall off a cliff edge. This is why you don't come after us, bruv, innit? Team croissants and that, innit? Team soft belly all day. <laughs> and, and for so many people, they, they, they think that, that, oh, you know, you haven't got what it takes to commit all of this. But one of the really important things I wanted to take away from this post is, Everyone's been messaging me going, you're going to lose so many followers. I've gained 2,000 since. Comments are not a good depiction for the performance of a post or a good place to realize how well a post is done. What do you think about that? Because you only see the most negative in people in the comments. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And how many likes did it get? Uh, about 20,000. Yeah. How many like com negative comments? Like, but you know what? The, the engagement isn't quite in line with the reaction, which leads me to be, believe a lot of people are agreeing in silence. Yeah, 100%. Oh, there's a lot of, uh, I think what a lot of people don't realize is people in the fitness industry say that, say, come at us for any other reason or come at you for that post that you did is, if you're sharing it uh, with your audience and going, look at this dickhead or whatever, I don't think you realize if you've got thousands of people, majority of people in the world are not fucking bodybuilders or want to step on fucking stage, do what you do. They want to, a more relaxed life where they can have a fucking, I don't know, bread, whatever they want all day. Sushi, exactly. Wine, Cross on, <laughs> whatever. And this is, and although one of the guys today, uh, what do you call me? Uh, like a, someone called me a bag of penises. I got called a sack of potatoes by someone else. Uh, and there's, there's another guy. Uh, I'll find him now. He's probably deleted it because I've kind of put it on my story a bit. But I uh, know oh he hasn't. He's still here. Uh, I, he's deleted his story. Oh, it's okay because I took a screenshot of it. I'm doing, do it with chest. Say it with chest, innit? Do it with chest. Uh, flabby bitch. That was it. Oh, okay, yeah. And yeah. I was like, okay, bro. Like, do I think I've got the best male physique? No. But do you know what? Not only am I happy with my physique, I would say that you know, someone's like, oh my god, you can only deadlift twice your body weight. That's pathetic. And I was like, you you don't understand. People don't have a real idea of what the normal world looks like. Because remember that gym we went to in Gold Coast, just full of everyone on gear. They oh, think yeah. that's what the world is. No, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's you know what? Um, and I know a lot of bodybuilders are going to agree with me on this. A lot of, because I've spoken to a lot and, and I'm, I'm one person. I, I take my, I take time to listen to people because I think that's the best way to learn. Do you know what I mean? So I listen to people and then I, I, I speak my opinion of what I've gathered. Right. And to me, what it looks like is a lot of people that put so much into bodybuilding and physique competition are avoiding some real problems that they're having with their self and just challenging all of it to that to avoid the actual thing that they're trying to figure out. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of people that I've met, I'm not going to lie, I, it was it was good for me to become a personal trainer after I didn't make it playing football. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was like, shit, man. I had one thing about myself. <laughs> I don't even have that. I know I'll do, I'll do personal training, at least help people. And I feel like there's a lot of people that's doing that. And the people that are doing that are in environments where they're in that bubble. Have you ever been to a bodybuilding competition? Uh, only to body power. It's mad, bruv. I went once. I was like, I could not believe it. And it's not like people are like, it's a pretty toxic environment as well. Me, you know, I was like, I was, I was in the back in it. I go in the back. Yeah. A couple of people came up to me. They were like, oh, they're in the outside. I was like, see, this is wicked. And I could see people staring. I could see, I could feel some hate from some of the guys. Right. There were so many fit birds. There were so many fit birds. And every man was looking in the mirror at their own physique. I didn't get it. <laughs> I was like, how is everyone here? Like, just like, I don't get the sport. 
It's just so for for, for me, I've, the thing is, I can actually I've used anabolic steroids probably two three times in my life. I know how it feels. It's amazing. But how I, I, I don't, mate. So when you train, I've never done the, it. So the pump is unreal. Is right? it? It's it's almost like makes you feel horny. Can you get that feeling back again? Nah. You never get it. Nothing close. That reminds me. What does Arnie say when he's like horny? My two favorite feelings <laughs> yeah. in life: getting the pump and having sex with a woman. I like him. I get to do both every day. <laughs> but like your your pumps are insane. Your performance is insane. Your strength increases are insane. Your mood outside the gym is insane. You feel great. You recover fast. But I realized coming off of gear that you can put everything in as far as you work your hardest, uh, you eat the best, you sleep the best, but you get smaller and weaker. And that really plays an effect on your mental toll. Yeah. Every time you finish cycle, you go, that's it. Five weeks later, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. And you get caught up in these really vicious negative feedback loops where all you're going to do is take more gear, go harder on a cycle. You tell yourself, I'm more experienced now. And that's no good. That, to me, that's not a good negative feedback loop. To get There's no in. good end result. You're getting older and then you're like, oh, I need to think about growth hormone. And if you think about it, not a very small percentage of men would ever compete natural. Yeah, no. You are manipulating your hormones so you don't feel like shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Sean, also, it'd be hard to compete in a competition where everyone is on juice. And then suddenly it's about who's taking more gear, that guy or me. Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of arguments from the community saying, oh, anabolic steroids, at least testosterone is familiar to the body. There are people eating KFC and drinking alcohol. Alcohol is not familiar. Yeah. But I was so grateful that I shifted my values and my goals and my mindset away from just how I look. Because if you're someone that holds everything on how you look, what happens if you get injured? Mate, you see it happen. You see the mental, like, um, the stressful times and depression people go through when they get injuries because they can't channel it anywhere else. And that's a big problem, especially when, imagine you're going through something like that. You don't have any good friends. You don't have any... Because what can happen is when, when you're so obsessed with your physique, people don't want to be around you. <laughs> they don't. So what happens? You lose friends. Your family, like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know, you lose, you start to lose the people around you. You get injured. Something mad happens. The one thing in your life now you can't do. And now you've got no one around you <laughs> to show you some support. Obviously, this is not everyone. But what I'm saying is I've seen a lot of people suffer from that, especially the women. Big time. Big time. Like the women I've seen. And you know what? So I, I think for a lot of girls, I think it's, again, this is my opinion, what I've seen. You know, like the girls, I guess, in the industry that we've met and all that. Don't you feel like, I feel like they don't have much friends. Yeah. I feel like it's hard for them to make friends. So I can't, I don't know how. It's a very difficult industry. The fitness industry is incredibly toxic in general. So International Fitness Summit, we've got coming up in under a month. Yeah. Everyone comes alone. Yeah, yeah. They're all alone, yeah. Because if you work as a personal trainer, people in your gym aren't really your friends. We were fortunate to become friends in the yeah. gym, but most people, they're not friends. I was fully booked in it, so I had no competition. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, you, it's funny, you, you leave a gym and you're like, oh, rah, that, that was actually just another competition. You're not really in teams. You're not really working together. Yeah. It's like you are all sole traders competing for the same space under yeah, the same yeah. roof. It's a very lonely industry. Same it with is. physios, same with everyone. So, you know, they're like, right, if I can't have meaningful relationships with people around me, I'm going to have a meaningful relationship with improving myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you say that. Like, even when you're like PT and stuff. Yo, what's going on? How many sessions are you doing? Uh, you know when they avoid it? I'm like, relax, bro. Tell me. It's okay. I'm not going to try and take your clients. Like, there's 2,000 members in this gym. I'm sure there's enough to go around for everyone, you know? And it creates that. And I, you might agree with me on this. You might not. One of the reasons I became a personal trainer was I had become an expert in trying to deal with my own insecurities. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I'm not going to... I agree with you on that. I was, I was I a fat, can, fat kid. Yeah. Like, the whole of my childhood was worried about how I look. But there's nothing wrong with that. That was your entry into dealing with your insecurities. And then you found more important things, in my eyes, to attach your energy to. Yeah. And right? now I'm less insecure because of it. Exactly. Because when I was a fat teenager and I was like, right... Well, I, I kind of leaned out a bit because I was learning about calories, about protein, about supplements, about weight training. After a while, I was like, rah, you know, I've learned, I'm, I'm such an expert in dealing with my insecurities. Let me help others with theirs. Because yeah. that's what, overweight people are insecure just as much as their personal trainer. A lot of bodybuilders are personal trainers. Like a lot of bodybuilders, they're in the industry. 
you know, they're either helping people, or coaching people, or whatever. And the point, the reason you're a coach is to help people to become better, not for you to become better. And you see this happen. You see this pattern of where coaches in the gym, bodybuilders in the gym, they're talking about their self more than helping their client out, you know, instead of being a little bit more, I guess, relatable. And I think that's why the way we kind of fit into the industry <laughs> is, I guess, easier for people to approach us because it's a little bit more relatable, right? And it, again, this could be quite arrogant for me to say this, right? Sorry. I I think our lifestyles are more in line with what men of this country aspire for. What do you mean? I think that men that potentially, so if we were to be realistic and look at the shape that men are in in the UK, for instance, yeah, we're probably in the top 20%, right? Me and you don't feel like that, but we are because we only hang around athletes, Paula Lima, friends, even Ali's in good shape, right? <laughs> even Ali, yeah, yeah. Right? So we're exposed, like, if we forget we're in the top 20% of us. Yeah. So the 80% beneath us who have, you know, got kids late to getting in shape, had tough times in life, whatever. They look at us and they go, Darren and James, eat croissants, work hard, run businesses, train martial arts. Yeah. They're not ready to step on stage, but that's the life I want. Yeah. That's what they aspire for. And it is more fun. And I think that's what's rubbing people so much the wrong way because there are people out there more muscular, better trained, stronger, leaner, yeah. and that compete. And they go, why are you giving those boys attention? You should be giving me attention. That's why I'm doing this. But which is why it's the wrong reason for you doing it. And it says everything about why it's a negative, it's a negative impact to you. And this is why people are so annoyed on the internet because we are getting the attention they're desperate for. The problem is a lot of people are, people are buying because you've all, there's truth to it. And it's frustrating because when they answer, that the answer that they give is not like, I commented on there yeah, after I read, like after we spoke. I come in and I go, why is everyone so angry? Why is everyone so angry? And this one girl kicked off like, wouldn't you be angry if someone influential said that about the sport that you're... No. It's just an opinion. Everyone's got a fucking opinion. Why would you let what James has said affect your day? This it's is mad. And again... It okay. doesn't matter how big time you are. It doesn't matter. This is the flavor that I think could be... And again, feel free to inject on this. When I looked at the profiles of all the people hating narcissistic motherfuckers and I can tell from their profile picture and that yeah. is judging a cover by its book I don't feel that the whole bodybuilding community hates what I say I feel the narcissistic ones do and you know tall poppy syndrome yeah yeah these guys have been hating on us for years yeah and this is the thing that's like blowing the top off because like I said before they might be smarter than us bigger than us better shape they're wondering why people are coming to us for diet advice I mean wouldn't you be upset if you went to Body Power and there was more people taking pictures with the fat kids. <laughs> that is it. That is it. That's what I'm saying. Because we are to them the fat kids. Yeah, we are. Flabby bitch. I got called a flabby team bitch. Team soft belly. Yeah, team soft belly. But the thing is, they, they don't realize they're alienating so many people. Yeah, yeah. How many times, right, have you like, me and you got lean and you're seeing someone and they're like, stop that. Because they want to go out for food on Friday and they, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. they don't want us to food prep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But it's, it's, it's hard because I think that's all they know and, and that the, they fear of stepping out. And because what happens is when you get into such a religious uh, routine, when it comes to bodybuilding, your food prepping, your training, your discipline, your consistency, it's fucking hard work. What happens when you slightly step out of your routine? There's panic, there's chaos. So they don't know how to deal with that. It's like when you left Australia, you had a wicked routine there. So there was that worry of you coming here, being out of routine. So you kind of were like in a bit of a, until you settled back in, right? So they can't step out of that because what happens is the minute they step out of that, they're like, shit, I've just put on a bit of body fat. That's all I had. The that's physique's it. all I had. That's all I had. And yeah. now it's fucked. Now what do I do? And it's chaos. No one's going to buy my programs. No one's going to swipe up to my BCA exactly. supplementation. No one's going to buy exactly. my stringy vests. But it's not value. They're not giving value. And the point of, if you want to inspire, and don't pretend you're doing it for other people to inspire people. I want to inspire these people. and all this. You're not inspiring no one, bruv. You're doing it for yourself. Just say that. Do you know what I mean? Don't pretend like it's for other people because it's not. Because then a lot of people like, I've read the comments, I had an eating disorder and it helped me and this and that. And I'm like, 
yeah, what do you eat this order? Fuck you know. I'm like, raw. That's that's new. <laughs> that's new, isn't it? <laughs> but the other thing as well is, um, oh my. Let's imagine this, right? Yeah, go on. Let's let's not like let's use Gymshark for an example, yeah. just because it's a well-known brand, right? Let's say you're on a bit of the juicy, juicy, right? And you get a Gymshark contract. You're taking a bit of test training, but you ain't going mad, right? You're getting older. You yeah. know, one day Gymshark are going to call you and say, "Blood, sorry." <laughs> You dropped. Got, yeah, we got a younger guy. He's taller, not hard. Yeah. <laughs> and he's juicier. He's bigger. He's got better pecs than you. Sorry, bro. It's yeah. a business decision. What does that do for that person? Bro, it, 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 it. you know the videos me and Alima were making? Do you know how many times I've been blocked by so many of those Gymshark people? All the girls, all the guys, they've complained. People that to, com to complain to people we know at Grenade going... How, how are you going to tell, like, allow this to happen sort of thing from the video? Because they're so insecure about that's the only thing that they're doing. And imagine if me and you get lean, we get down to a percentage where I'm not called a flabby bitch. And uh, then we get offered some mad deal from Gymshark. And they go, yeah, good lads, we're going to pay you 10 grand a month. But if you get fat, nah. Fuck that. Oh. Imagine that pressure being put on you. Yeah. Financially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To remain in shape. And like you say, there are so many people, string of vests, all they've got, they're, they're now on cycle for the rest of their life. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a bit mad. And also, to every bodybuilder that's trying to make it, yeah, listen, let me tell you something. If you ain't got good genetics, don't bother. Don't bother because you're not going to maintain that shit. You get, I see small guys hitting the juice thinking they're going to be able to get to all the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ali. <laughs> like, you see, because you see guys that like, oh, my days, I see him on Instagram. He's fucking massive, bro. Oh, my days. You see him in real life. I'm like, bro, I'm twice the size of you, bro. Doesn't matter how much juice you use, you're never going to be this size because your frame is just, it's not, it's not that big. And you genetically are not, because you know, you get some people, they just, you know, they just, they lean all year round, right? Those people, when they do bodybuilding, I don't think it's that difficult for them. But, there's obviously a huge trend on people getting into bodybuilding after they've lost some weight, after they've got into shape, and then it's just a cycle of emotions, up and, and down, and of, test the feeling good, feeling shit, feeling good. I got my period. Where's my period? Got my, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's a head fuck. You look, you peak for your competition week, you feel shit. Then you no doubt binge, you get fat again. Yeah. All you're doing is looking at pictures of your competition going, can't wait to compete again. Yeah. And I'm going to throw this out there into the mix. The best thing that ever happened to you was the day you realized you weren't going to make it as a footballer. Oh, no. I wish it was a bit earlier, though. <laughs> For me, exact same. They yeah. realized I was never going to make it as a rugby player. Yeah. What did we do? We got on making an honest fucking living. Yeah, yeah. The reason I made that post was to slap some 23-year-old fucking people in the face. Uh, not stop good. starving yourself for profile pictures yeah. and get a real fucking job. And when you have a family in 10 years and you've got a few kids, you can fucking thank me yeah. for it. Because no one wants... No one no one wants to hear about how hard you're training, bruv. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> no one cares. And I'm going to throw this out there as well. Look at Expos in five, ten years' time. Turf games will be bigger than body power. Yeah. No one cares yeah. about how much juice you're taking, how big you're getting. Yeah. And yeah. The, there's not a lot of money in it. No. Nah. And they bring the top 1%. Of what about Arnie? Yeah. What about Callum Von Moga? But you can't come. Arnie's he's a different breed. And Ask yeah, him if he cares about bodybuilding now. <laughs> And <laughs> so that comment, oh, I'll see you at the Arnold series. You won't. These these expos are not going to be here in five, ten years. Yeah. Even Un unless even, they pay up. <laughs> even Eddie Hall's boxing now. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. But yeah, see, like it's um it's a tricky one because we're not trying to uh shit on these people because if that is all you have and then that is really and if it is really helping you out, then great. And if it is you should, this should go off you like water off a duck's back. Exactly what I was just about to say. It shouldn't matter what you say or what anyone says. If you love what you do, then who the fuck cares about other people's opinions? And if you don't, you will bite. So stop biting, innit? <laughs> when we go after the vegan diet, who are we talking to? The people that are hating it. Yeah. The people that don't want to do it, they just watch the documentary. Yeah. The people that love it will just go prick and move on. Yeah. So uh, any bodybuilder is going to do GSA. Nah. Any bodybuilders going to do Project X? Nah. Any bodybuilders coming to your talk, sold out show, clap them grand? They can't because it's sold out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, exactly. So I don't think they get it. Nah. <laughs> People, and, and again, that, that guy calling me a flabby bitch alienates the big muscly guys in stringy vests out to one side 
and just makes us more relatable. So let's we put that topic to bed. Yeah. And if you want to disagree with that, guess what? You're allowed. You're allowed. And we don't care. Yeah. No one cares. And and someone was oh if you if you've got a problem, say it to my face. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. That was good. I good to see that. you, man. Good to see you too, man. Let me just not an ad. Today's sponsor is by Red, Red Bull. Bull. <laughs> now we just got Red Cut Bull. Out. <laughs> Mate, I got fucking ID'd for that. How crazy is that? ID'd for Red Bull. If that's the case, shouldn't I be ID'd for coffee? Is it not what is in there other than caffeine? So do you remember when you were younger, people going, Oh, someone had a double vodka and red bull, and because uh, vodka is a depressant and uh, red bull was a stimulant, they died. Yeah, I do remember that actually. It didn't stop me from drinking it though. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shut there was up. no check. I do like a vodka Red Bull, you know. It's easy to there drink. There was no check. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're right. But it reminds me of a shitty fucking horrible clubs. Really? Where the bottle lady comes out and they <laughs> they give you a <laughs> Belvedere or no, a like, You know you're a shit club when they give you the, you know the B-Tech version? The Tesco's one. Yeah. I, I lived off them. Did you? Oh. Was it called Boost or something? Yes. Oh, fuck. I think we just did a load of ads without realising <laughs> Today, guys, this uh, podcast is sponsored by oh. Red Bull, which came to me. <laughs> Management's going to be fuming. Yeah, so it's great. Alan at Grenade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those grenade drinks are actually pretty decent. Have you, um, have you found things since you got back? Yeah, it's all right. You sure? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure, bro? <laughs> Do you know what? Like, um, uh, being back, we are training at uh, Hodger Gracie's in Hammersmith, which is the best jiu-jitsu place I've ever trained in my life. Yeah, it's unreal. Just being around killers is fucking sick. Big up, Enrique, Luciano, all of them, everyone. Like, Roger, <laughs> is that like, I've not rolled with him. You've had Juan, the, yeah, the, Roger Gracie. That was, you know what? Um, so for anyone that's listening, any jiu-jitsu fans, okay, and for people that are not jiu-jitsu fans, Roger Gracie is the all-time goat of jiu-jitsu. And uh, an R is like a uh, almost like an H, isn't it? Roger, like Della Riva. Yeah, yeah, Hiva. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, uh, if he's called Roger or Hodger. It's just man getting a bit lingual with the Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's the goat. So he's like the Mayweather. Goat means greatest of all time. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, I had a chance to have a little uh, roll with him uh, just before I went out to Australia. It's the first time in a very long time I like fanboyed. I was like, I'm so honoured. <laughs> I'm so honoured. We slapped hands and, fit, and I was like, this is unbelievable. And in how many sports would you get to roll with? Who is a David Beckham you won't. It's he very, is, he is the tough. David Beckham of jiu-jitsu he to is. what? Yeah. And then we uh, got to roll with Braulio Estima, who will be coming on the podcast. Yes, yes. that would be that would be a lot of fun. He's like the Alan Shearer. Yeah, he's so like um, articulate about jiu-jitsu and the way he talks, which is why I think he'll be a great guest to have for sure. And I'm excited for that one as well. But I think being in London, you got all of that. A lot of events happening. How, how, how's your home situation? Yeah, so I live in Richmond. Got like a, I actually got a really nice like apartment to live in, and it feels very much like a home. Uh, living on my own, which is quite nice for like being tidy. And I actually like Richmond. I go for a run at least once a week in the yeah. park. That park is amazing. Yeah, a lot of people give me when when I'm in the street and someone recognises me, they give you a look. But when someone sees me running, it's like they've seen Putin in their front door or something. Like, they're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> They're like double tape. They're like, is that James Smith running? <laughs> what the fuck is going on there? Um, but yeah, I like it. And I like being slightly out of it. Also, when I was going to live in London, it had to be for me on the train line back to Ascot, where my dad comes to pick me up. So I'd be in Clapham. To make it worth you being here. Yeah. Like what I didn't want to do is like go from fucking Blackheath to Connect and whatever. Because I'd go home maybe once, twice a week. And like it's a little family tradition. My dad comes to pick me up. Yeah. He takes me home. We have a little barbecue. Um, but Richmond's nice. But even though I've been back and I've got an amazing house, amazing jiu-jitsu, amazing see friends, I still miss Oz. You're never 100% when you're in Oz. Uh, who, me? Yeah. No, I'm not. You're always a bit booky. But I think, <laughs> no, I'm not, yeah. I think Lon it's because it's I did it for so long, but I, I also think it's because I've got a visa. Yeah. I can go in and out. A bit like right now, I wish I had a girlfriend because I'm single. But yeah. the second I got a girlfriend, I go, she's doing my fucking head. Yeah. But when you get a visa, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you get a visa, I think it will, it will, I think you'll be more chilled in a sense because not knowing something is, it can be stressful. It's exciting, but also, but it's not exciting when you know what you want. It's also bad news is better than no news. And I currently have no news. Yeah. So it's like, can I get a visa? You can pay tax here. It's not what I asked. Yeah. Four years of paying tax. I was saying to Courtney yesterday, I got a tax bill for $125,000. 
Oh, how's my visa application looking? Oh, they'll let you know in a year. I wouldn't pay you, bruv. Well, I what I don't want is red marks. Red marks against my name. When I go in, they go, oh, you're some tax. So I'm keeping them sweet. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully think... there's no bodybuilders that work there. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> well, you're fucked. <laughs> you ain't gonna shit, boy. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure the immigration office is uh, in Adelaide, not Gold Coast. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be back. It's really good to see my family. Uh, my sister's had a, a boy, so I've got a little nephew using Oh him. yeah, because you know what? I was excited for you when you got to meet King Kong, innit? The king. Ernie. Ernie, I know. King Kong, bruv. He's king of Windsor. Tupac. Tupac, no. Um, uh, yeah, man, he, he's sick. Like, obviously, when I've suspected he's, like, he's all good to have on the gram and stuff, but when I think he's shit himself, mom, yeah. mom, come get your boy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's nice and it is real nice being home. But like you're back for a week and you're like, oh, bro, I I left Australia on Monday 3 p.m. to fly home. Wednesday 10 a.m. I text you going on board. I remember. I hadn't even been. I hadn't even left Australia for eight hours. I'm not on board. I remember texting a mutual friend going, "I'm not dealing with this bitch. Yeah, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm, not, I'm like, just just spend a week at home in it. You'll be all right until your house is set up. But when we were out in Australia, we called that the UK would be back to normal before Australia. Yes, we did, and I knew it because tough time <laughs> never last and Australia hasn't been for a tough time it hasn't and it, it, there needs to be pain before action exactly and before that happens which I think is happening now but I think I think they should just let it happen just open everything up just let it go let it go let it, and then deal, not deal with the problems later but like it's gonna have to eventually get out yes they're, they're in essence uh, I think that the Australian government is slightly anti-vax uh, they a lot of the people are yeah and yeah. So yeah. then they sit back. They were like, let's watch the whole world take the vaccine. We let, we don't want to buy any of it in case it's dead stock. And then uh, let's say there's real bad side effects. Scott Morrison can turn around and go, "Had your back, guys. Had your back. I'm your president. I'm your prime minister. I'm your boy." But then the whole world kind of sorted itself out, and then you know, everyone's out for oh, where's our vaccine? You can never win as a politician. Yeah, there's always going to be like so many opinions there, right? So no. But they've been so draconian. Like you had to spend two weeks in a hotel. Lord what does that mean? Like uh, authoritarian. Like okay, yeah, okay. Like if you had a draconian leadership and they said, right, don't go outside your house. Okay, like, yeah, the yeah. Chinese. Mm. But the Chinese have just done like eleven. They've done a stupid amount of tests for eleven cases. Yeah, Wuhan's like down to like COVID free. <laughs> Mate, it's mad, isn't it? Do you think it came out of lab? Fuck off. It is a lab leak. COVID-19. Well, I can't say it subjectively, but I believe it's a lab leak. I think it's, um, I think there's a lot of things that happen in the world that people like us will never know. People will never know. Just like, they are definitely hiding aliens, man. There's aliens out there. Bob Lazar thing. Uh, but there's, oh, what's it called? There's a type of technology that they're working on. And I believe under the uh, Obama, uh, when Obama was in, he was like, no, you're not doing this on US soil anymore. Yeah. Do that overseas. Do that overseas. And that's why it was being done in Wuhan. At yeah. Wuhan. But they, they, that's where the virus originated from. They have a lab there that modify diseases to get them to do certain things. Yeah. That apparent type of bat disease comes from thousands of miles away where bats don't even fly. It's just too much of a coincidence for that. Now, one thing I want to make clear is I do not call it the China virus because yeah. i believe it's an international lab yes so it's not like china uh trump's you know, but trump you know why trump did that though isn't it? it's just to turn people against anything trump said he's he's smart guy he's not dumb bro he's smart or his people are smart do you know what i mean he got elected he's a fucking smart. idiot but he's smart he's the smartest <laughs> idiot in the world yeah 100 100 percent. but now i do agree with you but again it's hard for me to say because we, we're never going to know no. We're never going to know. And the Chinese have just declined an investigation into that lab. Two years before that lab, the leak apparently happened. Yeah. There was concerns over the safety in that lab. But then whoever's putting the investigation in, who are they getting paid by to say what they need to say? Weapons of mass destruction. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like... Dodgy oh, motherfuckers. Hey, big man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a quick meal under the table for you. Obviously, make sure that document disappears. Boom. 
I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember what. This uh, is what happens in po- politics. Politicians, I'm trying especially to, in Middle East. I'm trying to remember. It's killing me now. There's a terminology they're using for the type of research that was going on. Uh, let me Google it. Wuhan lab research. I put lab, but hopefully Google. Not back to a certain disease. Gain of function. That's what it's called. Oh, gain of function it? research. So not gainer. Gain of function. So they manipulate viruses to improve their functionality to see how they react. Oh, what to see how they can use them. So there have been diseases. This is me, tin for hat guys, by the way, tin for hat. It is normal for humans to get diseases from other animals. There were some photographers taking pictures of bats as they came out of a cave. There was like a fucking million bats that came out, shat on the photographers. So much, the photographers got a disease from the bat shit and died. So that's happened. So like, if you were to eat a certain type of some acidic shit, raw meat that's got a parasite in, you could die. If you eat like a whatever, so, but so that happens. We After take, the shits you've took, bro, I reckon you'll want to be like that. As well. <laughs> Taking a disease from another animal has happened, does affect humans. But think of what it takes to take a disease from an animal, then give it to other humans. Yeah, at this infection rate, and then yes, yeah, spread it around. Oh. Nothing I don't think has ever been this infectious. Again, don't quote me on that, ever. What are the statistical chances that they were using gain-of-function research to make a virus more infectious? Oh, it's... it's like, And not even as like a weapon, because you can't weaponize something that... Yeah, that especially when you've got planes fucking going everywhere. But you just got geeks in the lab having some fun, innit? It's like us trying different things in jiu-jitsu. They were trying something, something happened. Oh, sh- oh shit. I'm and not that doing more. that again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was too late. Yeah. And it pretty fucking mental the last couple of years now. The last two years? Well, just a year and a half. Having to spend two weeks in a hotel, that's if I do get access to a country where I have to prove I'm negative, fly, get there, prove I'm negative, stay there for another week, prove I'm negative, and stay for another five days. Yeah. Keep in mind, you, were, you proved you were negative before you got on the flights as well. But then again, they could argue that's how the outbreak has occurred. <clears throat> but I actually try. I think it's like the air stewardesses and air stewards. Uh, yes. Dirty bastards. Dirty bastards. Yeah, there's a risk of that as well. But the ones I've spoken, uh, the ones I spoke to on the way out to Australia is they, uh, they tell me, uh, they get escorted to a hotel as well for the night or something and then straight back. But there were some, uh, estradesses that got fined in Zetland for not staying in the hotel. Or, they just or, went up and about. I wouldn't stay in fucking Zetland either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit <laughs> off. <laughs> shit <laughs> off. I did. Yeah, you did. You, I was like, Darren, how are you? You're like, yeah, I'm not great, mate. I was like, where are you living? You're like, Zetland. I was like, on a spare bed. But I thought it, I was staying in China, bruv. China. Bruv, it was just, it was just Chinese everywhere. I was like, hold on a second. This is crazy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So if anyone tries it, go <laughs> shut your mouth. But it was mad. I was like, bruv, I wanted to be in Bondi. What? <laughs> <laughs> why Zet, am I Zet, here Zet, you're, not, you're not that far I'm not, I'm not far that's you're, why you're far enough to get depressed no I was, I was far enough if I'm travelling from London I'm not going there like, I want to be in, amongst it do you yeah. know what I mean but that wasn't this time that was a it's like going to London to see Big Ben and fucking all that and living in Maidenhead yeah <laughs> yeah far down the shit <laughs> <laughs> Smokey Joe's there's a lot of people from Maidenhead like um, so yeah we got we got this mad fucking virus but the UK like it was supposed to be June 21st, then it was like July 21st. And one thing that fucking annoyed me, like I like Piers Morgan a lot of the time. He was like, opening up is ridiculous. And everyone's like, this is going to be a catastrophe. Yeah. Opened up, up, done it, completed it. Yeah. Virus on its way down. And people are like, oh, but there's a deficit at their all time high. Not being funny. Not enough deaths for me to be worried about it. Yeah. And you know what? I think it was, it was a weird time of, you weren't here in it. So like, there was weird like tension watching people like when you're walking around hiding their faces and shit when you walk past them. It was really weird. It was like, it was almost sad seeing like people being that scared, but it was almost kind of not good, but a lot of people woke up and went, fuck, I need to be healthy now. A lot of people didn't. And a lot of people didn't. Usually, you know what happened? A lot of the healthy ones went that way. A lot of the unhealthy ones went the other way. Takes pain for it to get action. Exactly. And now, because of that, it feels quite normal now, no? And do you know what? I could be wrong with this. I feel more inclined to abide the laws and COVID safe regulations now I have my freedoms back. Yeah. I wear my mask on the train more now that they drop the masks. Because you want to keep, yeah. You want to, 100%. You're like, you know what, Boris? I appreciate you. So in return, I'm going to wear the mask. A bit like when, uh, you know, like your PT says, 
hey, eat what you want, just don't go crazy. You're like, cheers, mate. But yeah. if your PT was like, who your fucking calories? Yeah. You're like, who your fucking calories? Yeah, exactly. You're skinny cunt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> But mate, we had our first experience in nightclub on Friday. That was weird. Yeah. That was we we didn't last very long. No. Like um Or yeah. in the club. <laughs> 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 um, this podcast sponsored by Trojan Condoms. <laughs> yeah. Um no, it was it was weird. I think um I realized how much I don't We're getting old. Getting older, yeah. Twenty nine. Thirty two and a half. Mad. So going out. I felt old in that club. Yeah, it was full of 18-year-olds. Yeah, I felt old. I used to love 18-year-olds. <laughs> when, when I was 20. <laughs> yeah, mate, it was, it was just a bit weird. It was a bit much. And also, for two people where population is majority women, it was all blokes. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. I'm out of there, bro. Like, sometimes it's nice. Like, girls coming over. Can we have a pic? Of course you can. Like, pretty girls. Smell, oh, you smell great. <laughs> but having dudes come over and be like, all right, mate, you can I have a selfie, mate? And I'm like, mate... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bro, you're 18, yeah? You're not a bad looking guy. And you've got a Snapchat up with a filter. Come on, bruv, slapping him in the back. Get rid that, of this Snapchat. That is it. You know what? The Snap, I, don't, I can't believe. I thought Snaps were just for nudes. Uh, yeah, and sticking your face on things for yeah, Insta yeah. posts. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Stop fucking filtering people. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You're, you're fooling no one. Yeah, I know. You know what? I, I love. Um, is that a little bit out? No, it's not. I love girls without makeup in it. Concur. I love girls without makeup. And then when we do meet a lot of people and then the ones without the makeup and then they put the filter on, I'm like, mate, you look great. You look beautiful. You don't need that. Like, why do that to yourself? You don't need to cover anything up. You look beautiful. Like, what's, do you know what I mean? And I don't know what, I don't know what the filter does. Like, it also creates this false. It, yes. And so you always, now that person's always expecting that or people think they look like that. So therefore, they always turn up like that or use that filter or whatever it is. I think you know? we're not too far away from like, you know, is it World of Warcraft where people are in a simulated game where they pretend to be another character? Yeah. People have died from playing World of Warcraft so much they don't eat and they die. Shut up. 100%. What? Let me Google it. You're chatting shit. Swear, swear down. What the fuck? Uh, world of... Why would someone want to do that? Uh, just a uh, quick uh, disclaimer. Nothing said in this podcast is guaranteed to be true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look what about craft death nah that's uh, mental uh, let's have a look man dies after 19 hour World of Warcraft session sorry bro I didn't really pass that bro so like people like you know in like Black Mirror people are in these kind of virtual simulation kind of shit people with selfies they're only one step away mate they're already they're in this position where they're like they're pretending they're wearing a, fa a facade and dating apps as well Everyone's doing this. And like you say, I love El Natural and I don't want to speak on behalf of women. But I've, yeah. I think women are trying to impress other women a lot of the time. Could be, yeah. Could be. We'll, because, we'll ask the next person, whoever. Because yeah. I'm, I'm only speaking out of experience, and this isn't objectively true, I'm speaking out of experience and me and my male friends who could all be the same. Like, team, leggings, crop top, oversized hoodie, yeah, yeah. no makeup, yeah. running trainers. Yeah. I'm like, yes, I appreciate when a woman makes an effort. Yeah. And I'd like her to appreciate when I wear jeans. But don't need it all the time. Yeah. Nah, you know who I, could, you know who I couldn't date? When someone's like, um, let's go grab some food. And they're like, hold on, I'll be ready in 45. Just got to do it. I'm like, what? 45? For what? I actually had this. Uh, no names mentioned. Uh, this girl in Sydney where I was like, we just had a nap on a Sunday. Seeing each other a few weeks. And I was like, let's, let's get some sushi. She put a hat on. She was like, I need to put some makeup on. I was like, mate, you don't. I said to her, you look great. Don't need to wear makeup. Come on. We'd literally just go down the road to grab sushi. So I stood there. And every minute that went past, I confirmed the fact I was never seeing her again. <laughs> <laughs> and like when we hit the five minute mark, I, I passive aggressive. Can't stood wait outside. for some people listen to this guy. You guys are. Oh, but like, and, and just to me I'm, I just looked at her and I was like not my people no no yeah. I, I did her a favour yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. but like and I was just like no nah, that's and I, I I couldn't have said enough but you know it was just a bit of a, an ick that's it that's what they call it these days the kids isn't it the ick give what's me that? the ick what's that the something gives you the ick so imagine oh, okay. you're with a girl on a date and she's yeah. rude to the waiter yeah 
Waiter, can I have another gin and tonic? Just oh, give you the ick. Oh, no, I can't do that. Give me your icks, Darren. That is definitely one of them. Don't steal my icks. No, that's definitely one of them. Uh, yeah. People that talk to... People... You know what? Yesterday, I was in uh, Sainsbury's, bought some sweets, and there was this old woman in a turban in a little, like, electric is wheelchair. It? Okay. Right? And the woman that was working there... She was like, she couldn't speak much English, so she was trying to get some help. And then was like, it's self-service. I've got other things to do. And I was like, excuse me? I was like, it's an old woman that's in a wheelchair. Are you joking? So I helped her out, right? And I was like, she's a Muslim. And I was like, salam and alaykum, auntie. And I was like, I helped her. Alaykum salam. Yeah, and I was like, I said, you can't speak to people like that. People... That are disrespectful, disrespectful to old people, cleaners, waitresses. Give me the fucking ick. Yeah, 100%. in general, I just don't trust them. I'm like that, and people that don't say thank you when they cross the road. Oh fuck! That kills, <laughs> that kills that us. Fucking, remember us? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> in Oz, people don't say thank you when you cross the road. But you know what? You saying that reminds me because I've spotted you do this a lot of times. We were in uh, Brisbane, and there was a lady sat outside one of the shops, and she said, uh, "Can I have some money?" And you go, what do you want to eat? And she goes, nah, I just want the money. And you were like, excuse me? And you looked at her, you're like, excuse me? <laughs> you had $50. I had $50. That's 25 pounds in his hand. He went into 7-Eleven, gave it to the woman behind the counter. The, ca- the woman thought you wanted change. Yeah. You said, if that woman comes in, this is for her. She didn't really understand what you said. You're like, this is for that woman outside. Do not give her cigarettes or alcohol. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Do not give her cigarettes or alcohol. <laughs> yeah. And you went outside to the woman, you're like, you got $50 behind the... And... She was actually like a little bit annoyed. Yeah. And you were like, you said to her, you're like, 50 fucking dollars, go get something to eat and a drink. Yeah. You're like, like, you're pissing me off. I was like, I'm offering you some help, man. Like, we used to work five hours to her. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. JD Sports, bruv. More than five hours. That was my day, bruv. That was mad. So I was like, and you think you're doing something good because like, you don't want to fund someone taking more crack, bro. You're just making their day worse. Although it might be great for them for the first t- for 10 minutes, but... Do you know what? This is a, an interesting discussion. I spoke with George Cruz about this a bit. I, again, I'm not an expert in this, but for a lot of people that don't have purpose, that we spoke about bodybuilders attaching themselves to the wrong things. Yeah. Some people have nothing to attach themselves to. So imagine for a second, Darren, that you don't have a family. Yeah. You don't have a job. Yeah. You no longer have a place to live. Yeah. You no longer have anything. And you try a bit of heroin on the street. Mm. And for three hours, all your problems go away. Yeah. Then you sit there and you ask someone for £10 and you get to go get more. Yeah. I don't think they're attached so much to the drugs and addiction and whatever. I think that if, you know, you look, you, if you only have one option in front of you for happiness, you're going to take it. And I think that's not too far removed from people that are obese, that they don't enjoy their job, don't enjoy their family life, don't enjoy their family interactions. They could have so much, but nothing brings them happiness, but food does. When I do see, homeless people and although we, we scrutinize them taking drugs smoking drinking sometimes i think we or i especially miss the fact that there might only be one thing that makes them happy that's what i have yeah Bod- s- bodybuilders are saying smith i wish you showed that sympathy for me <laughs> <laughs> but like but no I, I hear you and you know what they're in that position uh some because of their own decisions and obviously some know because they don't know any better. They've been raised in a way where that's the only option that you have. But in... Have you heard of determinism versus free will? No. So uh, free will is to say that you're in control of everything that happens in your life. Mm -hmm. I could be butchering this. I believe that determinism is uh, where, where you're born. Determinism versus free will. Determinism is where you're born, your family, being Kurdish, all of these things yeah. will kind of point you into a certain area of your life. Yeah. What do you believe in? Here we go. The determinist approach proposes that all behavior has a cause and is thus predictable. Free will is an illusion and our behavior is governed by internal or external forces over which we have no control. Okay. All right. I hear what you're saying. I would, <clears throat> this is what I think. People that end up in those positions we, everyone's problem is their problem, right? It's it's hard to judge, go, oh, 
You know those people that are like, oh, you've never been for anything. You wouldn't know how that person feels because they could feel more than how more stress than you in a potentially more stressful environment or whatnot. But I find it very hard to believe in countries like this, where you have so much opportunity, right? It's hard for me to feel sorry for people when I've seen 20 times worse in other countries. I almost want to shake some people and go, what the fuck are you doing? Look at the opportunities around you in London, in the UK. So although I do get the free will thing, what was the other one? Determinism. I think that definitely plays a huge part depending on the personality you are and where you were, where you, where you were raised. My dad, my dad's very different to his brothers and sisters. He could have gone a certain way. He was like, no, nah, I want an adventure. I'm going to fucking England. That's his personality, you know? So I guess it depends on the personality type, I would say. Were you? Yeah, so I haven't really thought it through enough, but, you know, for, for instance, I think more determinism, where, like, uh, where I was brought up, parents, family values. Um, and although I wasn't given, I've never, I've never really been given money by my parents, apart from, like, pocket money, like, yeah. for, like, £20 a week or when I was at uni. Um, but the opportunities they've given me, the way they brought me up, being there for me to talk to, all of these things, going to for advice, does channel you into a better position in life. Yeah. Which is why... You've got an advantage. There was a... Yeah, there was a really interesting uh, part in Joe Rogan about uh, the Unabomber. Uh, the guy that, like, he wanted to... He sent loads of bombs around the US. Like, it was a bit crazy. They reckon it's because he was left alone as a child. He had like a, a, an illness. He got no family contact for like a few months. And then after that, they say he was never the same because he didn't get that love he needed as being a child. Oh, shit. So like, I think that family structures could have a massive integral part in that determinism kind of aspects. Like oh. you, you and the trajectory you're on, you know, you've created this for yourself by the way that you treat people, which you would have inherited from your parents. And oh, 100%. Definitely, definitely. And that's why I think family is so... So, so important. And I'm actually excited to experiment by breeding at some point. You know, I'd be really excited to put across because like my dad and that, them coming to this country, I feel like I'm a, my generation is like, because I'm first generation, we're kind of behind. When I mean behind, I mean like, I feel like I may have to work a bit harder to get to your level in even something, in some things like, even ordering a coffee. <laughs> so today, during order to coffee, they go, what's your name? You went, James. <laughs> I just said, James, I couldn't be bothered to spell my name out of me. I was like, it's too stressful. Diren, uh, how do you spell that? Like, just James, just James. I can't be bothered. But even something as small as like, say you having to go to your mum and dad for like, I don't know, a grammar check or like your homework. If my sister weren't home, like when my sister was at uni, I couldn't go to her because my mum and dad don't speak the language. So you're almost a little bit behind. You go to a pub quiz and there's like a people bringing out these songs. I'm like, I don't know this song. <laughs> I don't know what song this is. They're like, Sing. Know, what the fuck is this track? I've never heard this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So there's that element of like a bit more struggle, which makes you stronger in different things, you know? And it just, yeah. This podcast is brought to you by... If you're enjoying this podcast, please feel free to share it. Stop right now, take a screenshot, put it on your fucking Instagram story. We would like to get lots of views and lots of engagement. Those are you on YouTube. Please do the same. So what I was saying was... <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you know what I've, I've noticed from the outside looking in? Uh, and I think the statistics could back me up on this. First generation immigrants do significantly better than probably most normal residents because your parents came over here and correct me if I'm you know, getting this wrong at any point. Yeah. They're so accustomed to the standards of life in Turkey where they came from as yeah. political refugees. They came here having a council flat, small house in North London. They're like, this is amazing. A hundred percent. And when COVID hit, they were like, we're safe, whatever. But you being first generation, you've got a taste of what the world has been like and what the world can be. And that gives you like an integral hunger Oh, big time. That your parents may not even understand. Mate, you don't, un they don't understand. Immigrants, like, say like my parents, for example, 
Last year was a good year for me, right? It was the first year where I could be like, fuck, you know what? You're in good blood. I'm good. You know what? I can afford my own place. I can buy myself a car and it was good. My dad's and my family's first reaction is uh, get a mortgage, right? It's get a mortgage because because they've always been so poor, any bit of money, don't risk it. Hold it. Do you know what I mean? Because they're like worried because they might not see it again. Whereas I'm the opposite in the sense of, no, nah, I'm just <laughs> spending all of it to hopefully create something bigger and better, right? So even when I go to like a steak place, like it go somewhere to eat, take mom and dad for food, my dad will be like, oh, Darren, it's a lot of money. Like, my like, dad, relax, bruv. He's like, I could have bought a whole lamb shoulder with that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's hard for them to get out of that. My mom would walk around with five pounds in her pocket, yeah, five pounds cash. No cards, nothing around Tottenham. And she'll be like, yeah, it's good. I'm like, good, I've got five pounds. I'm like, mom, this is, <laughs> mom, <laughs> you don't have to live like this no more. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? And, it's hard for them to get out of that. And considering that you didn't buy a house this year, yeah. you got yourself a car, and that must feel great driving to and from training, listening to podcasts, listening oh, to, mate, yeah. be, rather than being on tubes and fucking Ubers or whatever. Yeah. Then you got yourself a good digs where yeah. now you're living in a place that's good for content, creativity, even the ability that you are going to rest better with less stress. Oh, mate. And have your own supplement cupboard. Yeah. Little things like that are going to make Dirin a lot more profitable. Giving your parents an Amex that you did this year. Yeah. yeah. Giving them a metal credit card and saying, <laughs> mum, dad, you got this. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> they're taking a piss though. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was like, can me and your mum get two Apple Watches? <laughs> they're, on, they're on holiday in Turkey. I was like, yeah, whatever, innit? You know, you know he's already bought them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, people need to realise that spending your money to what most people would think is foolish, next year, you've just upped the stakes. Bro, 100%. And you know what? I think there's something... I think the, the more this stuff is happening, I'm starting to see more of my purpose. And I've, I, I, I think I really like being like a provider. And I want to be more and more and more and more. And I know you're like that as well. You, I don't know if you've ever said it, but I can see that in you as well. Even like when things first started popping off where you was like starting to make some cash and whatnot, I wasn't. And even with the event stuff, you're like, no, no, Darren's got a fly business too. That would make you feel like yeah. good, right? And I think we do that quite naturally. And the more things are happening, you realize like the more you give, the more you're the more you're kind of receiving. And this is why I think it's very important for people to kind of put that energy out there to other people and be like, you know what? Cut all this fucking, I owe you a coffee. I owe you this much. Just buy your friend a fucking drink, man. Or buy your friend a meal. You don't have to fucking calculate. So it will come back to you, man. Just put goodness out there and it will come back to you. People will see it, you know? And I think, this is the one thing that I'm enjoying the most at the moment this year is kind of taking risks with certain things. And the worst case scenario, you just start again. Do you know what I mean? And it's, and you can't, it can't, worst case scenario ever in this country, I'll go to the government, yo, Boris, I need help, bruv. <laughs> Get me a council estate and <laughs> 200 pound a week, innit? <laughs> I paid my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I need it back. Yeah, I need it back. That's the worst thing. So, Anyone in their 20s listening to this, risk it all, go for the kill, deal with the problems later, innit? Jeez, clip that. Clip that. Clip that. Hey, click that. <laughs> but honestly, it's one of those things where, you know, someone's like, oh, I've got 20 grand, what should I do? Go somewhere, stay somewhere nice for a couple of months, think about life, read some books. You know what I mean? This is a story, wait, hold on. <laughs> Smith's first big talk, right? Monaco. Yeah. Uh, was Monaco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you mind me telling how much you got for it? No, no, go ahead. Uh, uh, 5K, offered 5K to go do a talk. They paid for his flights, my flights. We got a driver picking us up. Keep in mind, this is 2018. This is where things are slowly starting to like, I've got like 10,000 followers. You've got like 50 or 60, I don't know, something mad. And we're, uh, we go to Monaco and he's getting five bags. And we're like, let's go out to eat. We're being really careful here. We're like... Oh, Let's not over order. Let's like, like, this is a good deal for you, Smith. Like, don't waste your money. Let's not order anything, any food, any drinks to the room, right? We're being careful. How much is a burger? 50 quid. We're like staying in the most luxurious hotel in Monaco. We go out. Smith's like, I'm like, bro, you made 5K. Let's not go mad. We go out to dinner. He's like, 
oh, I'm getting everything. I'm like, no, no, don't, bro. Don't waste your money. He's like, I'm buying, dude, and I'm getting everything. I'm pretty sure it was like a 2K dinner or something stupid. That's like nearly half the money gone already, not including the hotel um, bill that we thought we were going to pay. And uh, it's mad because you put that out there and it's coming back, you know? Even the other, the other day, it's like £600 round for drinks. You're like, I'll get this. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. I was like, you yeah. weren't, weren't even yeah. drinking. Like, but it's mad. And even if you end up being the poorest person who gave the most, it's a great position to be in. I'm, I'm feeling now that I haven't, you know, you say about being a provider. Yeah. I got no one to provide to. I got my parents a car. Yeah. They don't need anything else. I got yeah. a new pram. Prams are fucking expensive. <laughs> 500 pounds to push a baby around. I just carry it. <laughs> but like, um, like it's almost like this week I'm launching the JSA challenge. I know that money's going to come in. I got, I got nothing really. Yeah. But I think you do without realizing you do it with your friends, your family. Yeah. You do it like it, it, it goes around organically. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's where the fun is, you know, that's why it's important to have good people around you. And that's why I think it's, it's becoming harder and harder now to get specific people in your circles because you don't want to like waste your energy on people that you think that are not going to, I don't know. It's it's hard. To, it's hard to explain. It's like you don't want to. We're clicky motherfuckers. It's like you know when you're yeah, like when you're out with your friends, um, when you pay the bill or whatever you do, you never want to. When I do that, I never ever. I'm. I've never ever walked away going, "Why did I get that?" Yeah, but I've kept mental note of the people that never paid. Yes, <laughs> you know the brothers that never offer. Never offer. Never offer. Oh, I've got to get an Uber. <laughs> Yeah, then that I'll get I'll get the Uber. You get dinner. Yeah, the dinner was six hundred pound. You prick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know them guys. <laughs> so, do you want me to get the Uber? <laughs> then you hear like a tumbleweed rolling across the road in London. <laughs> oh shit, them ones. Uh, so coming on to other things, you've got your first uh, event, Clapham Grand, and yes, year. sold out, sold out. Very excited. Manchester, yes, Manchester's. I think we've got like five hundred people at the minute, but there's still more. Yeah, there's still, there's still ages for it. So if you want to come to the Manchester Street. And even you if you are London, it's a nice night out, Manchester. Get well, on the train. Yeah, 100%. Wait, the London show will be sick, bruv. I can just walk home after. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. You literally live like. Around the corner. Shh. They're gonna, oh, you, know, you know, people are going to now wait. They're going to blockade the road. <laughs> They're in. They're in. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I've had like, um, it's going to be like a night of madness. I want, because I've joined you for a lot of fitness talks and stuff, and it's all we do, really. Like, especially online and I want a night of pure energy, like hour, hour and a half of energy and doing like all the warm ups with your shows and getting a mic thrown at me on the first ever event that you did in Wales and I was involved. It's 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 like a slow warm up to You done your reps. Yeah, exactly. You done your reps. And I think a lot of people don't do enough of that. And then ask themselves why they're not, why they are in the place they are. They don't do their reps. Have you ever seen um, some coaches teaching Olympic lifting get you to use a broomstick to begin with? And a lot of people are like, I can lift. Yeah. I can, why, why have I got, and it's the ego. It's the ego, 100%. It's the ego. Mate, do you know how many people I had say to me, why are you opening James shows? The fuck, mate? He's my best friend. What, what? Just because you've got an ego fucking problem and you think, what you think because he's got because I'm opening for his show you think that what he's got upper hand in me or something I don't care it's bro. not like I'm being do you feel in charge yeah, yeah bro that's what I'm saying like, and I think people are so weird like karate kid <laughs> karate kid <laughs> hang it up yeah remember that opening scene yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like um, and yeah you're just doing your reps and you got your first show you got your first paid business talk oh yeah I'm excited for that as well in Scotland that's going to really I can't wait to share my story with um with like PTs because it's just gonna be You've been offered money to do business talks for and you're like, I'm not there yet. No, I'm not doing it. But I wasn't are, doing it. But you are now. I'm, I'm I feel I feel confident in talking about it now because I can turn around and be like, well, this is what I did. And it's almost like I don't like being you can't be a fucking business coach if you don't know how to make money. I'm sorry. But if you've got like two grand in your account and you're trending PTs how to make money, you're a fucking idiot. Exactly. And there are so many you have to walk the walk, talk the talk. Hundred percent. Yeah. And some bodybuilders going to be like, still listening. 
But you haven't competed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the same with life coaches, you know? Fucking 22-year-olds becoming a qualified personal trainer because they do fitness. You think you can give your 40-year-old corporate client fucking life advice? Nah, bruv. It's not happening. You don't even pay rent. You're at home. <laughs> yeah, they, and, and the amount of like uh, business coaches that kind of exist out there. Someone yesterday was triggered that I said you don't need a a, a mentor, like when you're doing business. Uh, and they were like, "No, you, James, running a business without a business coach is like trying to get a fit without a PT." And I was like, "Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. You fuck. Who the fuck said that? Someone checked out their page. Business coach, bruv. Oh, um, oh my god. People, this is when you need a coach when you don't know what you're doing." You don't need a mentor. You need someone to teach you what you're doing because a mentor, you get paid monthly. Yeah. And the same with PT, you get paid monthly. But what we do is we take people into enrollment, we teach them what they need, and then we send them on their way. Yeah, 100%. Some people need to do two enrollments, some yeah. people three, whatever. But like, you don't need a mentor. You need someone to teach you how to market your business, make money. Yeah. And then you just get better. Too many people go to seminars and don't take action. Mm. The only way you're going to learn is by taking action and making mistakes and Doing your reps. Yeah, doing your reps. And to be honest, the talks I'm going to do on the business talks is I'm pretty much going to be talking about all the mistakes that I made. Sick. And, and yeah. And talking about this is the mistake that I made and then adding this principle to it and being like, this is why and this is what happened. I won't ask you too much about the talk because if you're anything like me, you're not going to write it till the day you fly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and again, uh, we've got the International Fitness Summit coming up end of this month. Fuck, it's in like 24 days, bro. No, 23 days. Really should start that power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for any people listening, what to you is the International Fitness Summit? Because to me, um, okay, so... Full disclosure, our events team run it. It's not us. It's not us. It's not us. But um, I think what we've done with uh, what we do, what you do with your clients, what I do with my clients, uh, how you've placed yourself in the fitness industry, how I've placed myself in the fitness industry, it's all about good vibes learning, enjoying yourself and having no cunts around. And IFS to me is the first fitness event that I've ever been to where I felt so relaxed in a sense of there is no element of judgment here. It's just like, it's so great. And no one, you don't have to be shaped to be there. You can come there on your own. All the speakers are out and about taking pictures with people, talking to people, taking time with people. And that's what it's all about, bringing good times together. And also, sick fucking DJs. Uh, this year, Mr. Jam's come. I'm really excited for that. Mr. Jam is a sick DJ. Mr. Jam has got some mad energy. Oh, um, crazy energy. Like, I, I rated him. Then I saw him live. And I was like, this guy is incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. So to me... Do you know what? Like, and not to shit on Body Power, but when we were at Body Power, they had John Jones there. On a stand sponsored by I think it was like Vanquish thing. Yeah. go up get a picture move on queue for two three hours of your yeah. Saturday and you get... pay for that I'm yeah. assuming yeah, yeah you yeah. pay for a picture yeah. and I think Khabib might have been there yeah. or whatever and, and I, I hate that at expos then I hate supplements being sold to people by guys on steroids Yeah, I hate that I hate the fact that the evidence based speakers at an event who have got real knowledge for people are put on the smallest stage Yeah, and then there's a massive stage for people doing physique comps yeah Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and the only people in the crowd are the families and friends of the people doing it. They're yeah. just there to support yeah. them. I didn't even know that. When, that first time I went body pack was the first time I went. It was the same as you, in it. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't even know that was a thing. And I was like, oh, what's going on with all these? But apparently there's been a huge rise in females ages from 25 to uh, 30 that year. Body power. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so like when our events team came to us, like a company called Into Events, they go, boys, what do you want there? We said... Do panels because people love interacting with people they follow with. We've got a mental health panel, got a social media panel. And like you can have four of your favorite people from Instagram and you can put your hand up and say, hey, what, what did you think about this? Yeah. Uh, you know, even some people, you know, ask them absolutely anything. We've got um, a lot of brands that are going to be there, but like cool brands like Grenada bringing a hot air balloon. Yeah, that's going to be mad. Budgie yeah. Smuggler are talking about doing like a Ninja Warrior sick. course. Oh, sick. That, that includes drinking. Oh so you got to like neck a pint, spin around something <laughs> and do a run. There's, um, we're actually, Darren and I are going to be meeting all the solo attendees on the first day. Yeah. I think 65% of people are coming alone to this Sick. event. So like, and it is almost like a singles event, but some people will know each other. Yeah. Um, and then. That's, that's a lot of the times with the questions, that's what I receive. And it's um, because of the environment that all the speakers 
bring, because of the people everyone brings, the environment is very positive and everyone is very, I had so many inboxes from the Camden show, your show. Oh my God, I came on my own and I made two friends. Oh my God, I came on my own and I made a friend. And I'm like, this is what it's about, man. And people coming there, knowing it's this sort of mentality, are way more open to make friends, which I think is quite hard in today's day and age. So therefore, if you're on your own, come through because it's going to be a great day. And it's in London, man. It's fucking local. Like, no, it's not, not like you go get a flight to fucking Lisbon on your own, which you will have to do next year. Yeah. So make friends now. Go with them Also, next year. great opportunity for you to see what it's like in London. Then you can be like, okay, do I want to go? Or is this another fucking... That party on Saturday night's getting lit. And I know that me, you, Paul Lima oh, are going to be sending it. I'm sending it so Sink. hard. My business talk the next day is going to be... Ropey. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have a beer in it. <laughs> for any like fitness professionals that are listening, the next day we're going to be giving out pretty much all our trade secrets to running a business, operating yeah. social media. You got myself, yourself, got Alan Barrett, the founder of Grenade. <laughs> He's a, yeah, a guy that made some big money. <laughs> He's got like 60, 70 million pounds in his current account. <laughs> uh, we got Jamie Alderton, we got uh, Mark Coles, Sick. Phil Graham, yeah. and Paul Moore. And those four there, you've probably not heard of them. So they've not got many followers. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm fucking around. They're actually the four people that I learned a lot of the stuff Same, yeah, that yeah. I'm going to be talking about. So people are like, oh, I've never heard of the other four. I'm like, I know. Because yeah. they're who I learned from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, fuck. Am I the youngest speaker? I think so. Fuck. I'm the youngest speaker, yeah. The youngest business speaker. I'll take that. I know, I know some people are going to be like, there's no women on the lineup. Guess what? I invited women and they aired me because they think they're too big time for it. Yeah, you did actually. Um, I know. So I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing for that. So like, if you want to get lit, have some gin tonics and party with Mr. Jam. Yeah. Uh, that would be the the place to see us. 100%. Um, what, when we were talking about stuff with growing mullets. Oh yeah. That's the new thing. Yeah. Do, do you want to tell people about how the, what does a mullet mean to you? I'm not going to lie, bruv. I like the long hair. And I didn't want the back bit to go. And I went to Christian, Barber in Fulham. I was like, I, I want the fade. I missed the fade. It's been a year and a half. But I like the length. But I like the length in the back. And he said, let's just get started. <laughs> it ended up being a mullet. But then I knew Smith wanted to grow one as well. And day after, he was like, I'm getting this shape up as well. And then boom, next me, you know, got mullets. And, but I like it now because it, the size are growing out now. So it's not as bait. You know what I mean? But you're going to get more bait again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like going through phases of having a bait mullet and then just grows out sick lid. Yeah. But I'm going to wait till I will do this weekend's event like this and then on Monday we'll do another shape up. <laughs> Very interesting. Or we can just go ham for Leeds. Yeah, go yeah. full mullet. Yeah. We're in Leeds this weekend, by the way. So if any of you are in that area, please do come through to our event. Yeah, we've, mate, we still have 10 events to do. we got Leeds this weekend. Night then we've got Birmingham. Um, some of them are sold out. Let me take a quick look. Yeah, have a quick look. Give people formal. Yeah, the heads up. Um, I'm buzzing. Oh, John, I'm excited. We haven't been, I don't think we've been lead since that first year. The oh, night before shit. Body Power. Oh, that was a messy night. Yeah, we got pretty booze. Oh my God, that was scary. Um, the, I'm, I'm excited. I, don't, I, I can't even remember what Leeds is like. I don't remember what it was like. We got a lot of shots done that time. Yeah. Okay, I can't find the, the story. But and then we did two days of Body Power. Remember how mad that was? That was pretty mad. That was fucking mental. Jesus. Um, what do we, uh, we got any kind of closing thoughts, comments? Um, no, it's been a mad, it's been nice catching up. It's been a while. I like these ones because it's not like, it's just kind of chill. No talk. show notes. We literally just jumped on it. Yeah, just jump on, have a bit of chat and, uh, if you want to get tickets for International Fitness Summit, go to uh, either at IFS underscore events or go to internationalfitnesssummit.com. Uh, if people want to inquire about Project X. Yes, dierencartel.com. Uh, D-I-R-E-N-K-A-R-T-A-L. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then obviously if you need anything from me, uh, jamesacademy.com. Yes. Darren, thank you for holding up the book. Thank you for coming on today. Um, that's been really enjoyable. It's been fun, man. It's a nice catch up every now and then. Hey guys, thank you for listening to the podcast. If you'd like to share or put this in your stories or just tell a friend about how amazing this was, don't forget, this will be live on Spotify, YouTube, and iTunes. iTunes podcast. Tune in for the next episode. So, 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 so. so, so. so. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers coming on, bro. Thank you, bro.